great American tradition lives on as John Viner hosts the best of Sullivan. The People's Court, today at 4.30. How is he, Miles? Have you seen his x-rays? All right. Uh, listen, any lawyers hanging around there screaming police brutality? All right, we just take it easy. Troy Bannister is listed in good condition. They have it down as a mild concussion. I don't even think that's accurate. I think probably what happened to him is he just had the wind knocked out of him. Well, that's not all that happened. One of my officers knocked the wind out of him, apparently for no good reason. Well, I wouldn't know anything about that. The only lawyer I've seen around here is his sister, Dee Dee Bannister, and she was not screaming police brutality or anything of the sort. All right, what's the prognosis? He'll be out of here in 24 hours. X-rays don't show anything, but it's standard procedure to keep him here and head injuries. So he'll be out uh, about this time tomorrow, good as new, or as bad as new. Uh, Dee Dee tells me he's in some trouble with your guys. Yeah, well, he's facing a gun rap now, but don't ask me how Calvin's actions last night are going to affect that. Calvin? So he was the one. What happened? Oh, I don't know. I haven't even heard of the details myself. Miles, I got to go. I got another call. So long. Yes, Helen, who is it? <sighs> I'll take it. Yes, Raven, what's up? Hi, baby, you'll never guess what I found. A Mexican restaurant with a French chef named Chez Pancho. <laughs> Isn't that amazing? I thought maybe we could go there today for lunch. Oh, my gosh, you're not serious. Yes, I am serious. I, I walked by it the other day. I had to go up and look at the menu. And besides that, it's only a couple blocks away from the police station. Look, honey, it wouldn't matter if we're just down the hall from my office. I can't go to lunch today. Yes, you can. We had lunch yesterday. Yeah, well, that's part of it. We had lunch yesterday, and we had dinner the night before. Let's, uh... Give it a rest? Hey, come on. You, you had to run off. You barely had time for a drink. I felt cheated. You, you ran off in the middle of my best story. Maybe be reasonable. I am being reasonable. It's about time you did something healthy. And besides that, I'm all dressed. The reservations are made. And it's time to go. All right. Uh, come by the office. Maybe I can go down for a drink. OK. See you soon. Bye. <sighs> Geraldine, Geraldine, Geraldine. How come nobody writes to me? don't know my last name yet. Hmm. From Skylar Whitney to Geraldine. Stiff. It feels like an invitation. He's throwing a party? And he's inviting Geraldine without me? Edge of Night is brought to you by Mild Ivory Liquid. It helps hands stay young looking. And by Era, a combination of powerful cleaners to clean all the way through. When we set out to make a great laundry detergent, we started with powerful cleaners that work on deep down dirts. Cut through soaked in grease, get out seeped in food, clean through ground in collar soil. Then we concentrated them, all in a powerful quarter cup called Era. So effective, it cleans all the way through. Watch Era clean through ground in collar soil, taco grease, and motor oil. Put a teaspoon of Era only on the top. Rub, run under warm water, and look. The Era cleaned all the way through, even through the collar soil. That's the kind of clean you want for all your wash. Era cleans all the way through. I'm 30 years old. So am I. Now, one of these skiers isn't 30. She's 44-year-old Barbara Gould, mother of three. Can you tell who's who? Take a good look. Now, look at their hands. Even they don't give us a clue. Her secret, she cares for her hands. And part of that care is mild ivory liquid. Doing lots of dishes, I wouldn't put my hands into anything but mild ivory liquid. I love those rich suds because they help my hands stay young looking and get the dishes really clean. Still can't tell who's who, huh? Mom, come on. You gave me away. Yes, I'm the 44-year-old. I like my hands to look young, and ivory liquid really helps. Mild ivory liquid helps your hands stay young looking. Yeah, Stoner, and that was his name. Oh, he hassled me once before in the same restaurant. I guess he decided to make a habit out of it. Well, 
Oh, I doubt that. So you happen to know Calvin pretty well. He's got probably more citations than any cop on the force. Yeah, man, I could have told you that. It's always the meme cops that get all the medals. Listen, listen, I'm not going to argue with you. I just happen to know that if Calvin gave you a hard time last night, it was probably for a very good reason. Yeah, you had a reason, all right, my sister. Your sister, Dee Dee? Yeah, you know about them, don't you? No, oh, no, wait, wait a minute. I know Dee Dee happened to like her very much. As far as her personal life is concerned, Let I know me nothing. clue you in, Doc. That's personal, but, uh... All right, anyway, he had a fight with her, right? So he can't take it out on her, so he takes it out on me, her brother. I mean, you dig the psychology? I dig your psychology. I don't buy your explanation. Because I've known Calvin far too long to believe he'd use his badge out of any kind of personal frustration. And it wasn't his badge, Doc. It was his fist. Uh, is it all right? Yeah, sure, Dee Dee. Come on in. Hey, Dee Dee, how are you? Did you talk to the man like I asked? No, I haven't had a chance yet. Dee Dee is not just my sister. She's my lawyer. And we're talking here about suing the cops for assault or false arrest, something like that. Is that true? Don't pay any attention to my brother. <laughs> he was a jailhouse lawyer not long ago. Well, listen, from what I understand, uh, your brother here got injured while he was resisting the officer who was questioning him. Now, look, Calvin may have been overreacting. I don't know, but I think I'd take that into account if I were you. We aren't planning any legal action, Miles. I, I was thinking we might make some kind of a deal. Well, I will leave you two to your consultation. I'll stop by later, make sure you're OK. All right, Doc. Thank you, Miles. Mm -hmm. OK, Troy, let's stop being cute. I want some straight talk. You heard it straight, Dee Dee. Your friend Calvin was just itching to get at me again, thinking I was dumb enough to carry that piece a second time. Oh, you are dumb enough. Hey, look, I learned my lesson. Look, all I was carrying was this. And I wasn't gonna shoot nobody with a tape player, was I? Okay, Troy. So why didn't you tell Calvin the truth right from the start? Or did you want him to look foolish? <laughs> was it your idea of some kind of a joke? No. It was his idea of getting even, that's what it was, with you. Because of the fight you had. I mean, you did have a fight with the guy, didn't you? Actually, we came to an understanding. And he may have been in a rotten mood because of it, but that still doesn't mean it was his fault. Would you just think a little, Dee Dee? We can use this. Then we can use what happened last night. Look, I don't care what you say. I'm going to try and make some kind of a deal. You don't know what you're talking about, Troy. The cops don't want bad publicity. All we have to do is say, look, you drop your case, we'll drop ours. Troy, you're a dreamer. And you're a lawyer, Dee Dee. And you're more than that to Detective Stoner, right? All right, Stoner, you can start talking. <laughs> yeah, I suppose you went here about last night. I've had long enough to think out your excuses, so this better be a good one. No excuse, Chief. What do you mean, no excuse, Chief? I mean, I've got nothing to say. I was wrong, period. I ran to the kid in SIDS. I was in a rotten mood. And the first smart thing that came out of his mouth, I was ready to give him a hassle for. Listen, I've heard that routine before. It's got zero appeal to me. Yeah, well, um, it's no routine. It's just the way it was. I felt this heavy metal under his jacket, the same place he used to carry that piece, and I thought he may just be dumb enough to be carrying it again. So you followed him out in the parking lot? Yeah, he was running an errand for his boss, who was also there. Laura was there? Yeah. Anyway, I asked Troy about the gun. He says you didn't ask him anything. He says... You searched him forcibly. Yeah, well, of course he did. I was trying to be nice to the guy. I asked him to give it to me. He refused. We struggled. His head hit the wall. That's it? It's not much of a story, but that's all that happened. You've already told me that you weren't feeling in a very good mood. What's the matter? You got personal problems? You always tell us not to bring that to work. And I'll keep telling you that as long as I'm chief. It's a lousy thing to do. It makes you act like an irresponsible rookie. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, too. Listen, Calvin, I gotta be honest with you. You know how thick the grapevine is around here. I've heard your wife going back to New York. <laughs> yeah, well, it didn't take that long to get around. I did it. I'm sure you're feeling pretty bad about it. Last night proves that. My problem is it may happen again this morning or this afternoon or any time until you get yourself out of this mood. Chief, I have always given you my best shot. You know that. I know you have. 
but you've been working real hard. So why don't you go down and tell Anderson you're going to take some vacation time off? You haven't asked for it this summer yet, have you? No, I was uh, waiting for something to happen. Well, something has happened. You go talk to Anderson. Believe me, you need it. You deserve it. Thanks. Go on, I got somebody coming to watch. Wishbone took the fresh taste of real sour cream and made it delicious. New Wishbone sour cream dressings, each perfectly blended as only Wishbone can, for a fresh, light, sour cream taste that's better than delicious. Delicious. Three new Wishbone sour cream dressings with buttermilk, bacon, or Italian herbs. You know Wishbone makes them delicious. Almost three dollars for a burger, fries, and a shake. What if I brought Harold and the two kids? For about three dollars, all four of you could have had Chef Boyardee beef ravioli, a salad, and a drink. All four of us? You get tasty pasta pies filled with lean, juicy beef in a rich tomato sauce. What a delicious meal. What a great price. Chef Boyardee beef ravioli. Give your whole family a good hot meal with meat at a price you can afford. Thanks, Chef Boyardee. Yeah, I see what you mean. There's a lot more to designing sets than just putting pictures on paper. Yeah, well, you're gonna have to know what goes on back there, over there, here, and in the front. Well, it'll take a while, but I'll get the hold of the technical things. You know what's more important? Is that you familiarize yourself with the script. You're gonna have to know as much about that script as the director. That'll be Gavin Wiley. Yeah, you're gonna be working closely with him. You just got to get a feeling of the story and the characters and, and the kind of space that they occupy. And how they move around the set. Yeah. There's a flow to every play. And unless you understand that flow, you're not going to be able to do anything except add furniture around it. So, that's the end of lecture number one. Is that enough? No, I'm enjoying this. Okay. Then the next lecture will start right off. It's a very practical matter. Money. Oh, hey, if you're worried about paying me... No. <laughs> I'm worried about the expense of the sets that you're going to design. Oh. You've got to really stretch your ingenuity. This isn't Broadway. Well, don't worry. I know a little bit about making dollars stretch. You do? It's not what I heard, not with your family background. Yeah, I figured you'd heard that story by now. Well, they didn't say you were rich. They just said that your family was positioned. My father is the president of the Republic of Eden. That doesn't automatically make him a wealthy man. And he isn't. There was something about titles. You've heard of penniless or aristocrats, haven't you? Well, actually, there is no aristocracy in Eden. It's a republic. The title is inherited from our ancestors and doesn't mean a damn thing. I hope none of this means anything to you. No, you're just my roommate. and. Hopefully my set designer, if you'll take the job. <laughs> I'd really get a kick out of it. Great. Well, an angel from the back. Hello. Hello, darling. I hope I'm not in the way. Not at all. In fact, you're just in time to meet the newest member of the company. This is Chad Sutherland. He's our set designer. And this is Buffy Revere. She is our new benefactor. Well, always nice to meet a benefactor. Well, it's always nice to meet dashing young men. <laughs> I could have sworn that James intended you to be one of our leading men, but uh, you say you're an artist. Uh, still in the struggling stage, Mrs. Revere. <laughs> Call me Buffy. I hope you will give me the privilege of seeing your designs when you've made them. Mm -hmm. We're not really in that stage yet, Buffy. Yes, well, that is uh, what I came over here to talk to you about. The stage of things. I, uh, I presume you've had enough time to think about my suggestion about bringing in a road company? Yes, I have. I think it's a good idea. It's going to take too long for us to get our own company together here. Uh, and you accept? Yes. How oh, lovely. We'll bring in, we'll bring in the, the, the sets and we'll bring in all those people from the road companies, but we need one thing. We need to bring in our own directors and we need to bring in our own talent. Uh, yes, of course. Okay. I see nothing wrong with that arrangement. And you will do the designing of the sets. <laughs> I'll be doing my best, Mrs. Revere. Uh, Buffy. Look, I gotta run, Jim. Bye-bye. See you, Jim. Bye-bye, darling. 
Oh, he's adorable, isn't he? Too bad he's so young. Well, I like them young. I'm not quite that young. <laughs> well, I suppose I really should be going along myself. I have some shopping to do. Okay, Buffy. Um, about the renovations. Yes, I know. You need money. <laughs> I'll put the check in the mail tonight. Thank you. Goodbye, darling. Why do you say that? What reason would I have for this lunch except the pleasure of your company? There's one thing I know about you, Mr. Schuyler Whitney, and that is that you like to have a reason for everything you do. I'd invent reasons just to be with you, Val. Oh, stop. But you're right. There is something I want to talk to you about. It's a question, actually. About what? About the party I'm giving. I already told you I'd come. Yes, I know, but I want to make sure that you come alone. You'll find me dancing, and you'll find them little eating. There's some mighty good Crisco cooks around here, and they're always coming up with some great new Crisco recipes, like peach tarts, leggy crust. And don't those shrimp croquettes look good? That's good cooking, Ma. Why don't you get the recipe? I will if you get up there and dance. Mm. Look for Loretta's recipes in your favorite women's magazines. Crisco will do you proud every time. <laughs> get it, honey, get it. Cammy all over, pretty Miss Marilyn. The one with the beautiful skin, soft and clean to turn a young man's eye. And the coconut soap is the reason why she's Cammy all over. Cammy is the only leading beauty bar that's one half coconut soap for creamier lather to feel soft all over. Not just a face, but every place she uses Cammy all over. Cammy for beautiful skin all over. Yes. Take that Grandma. <laughs> oh, Mom, she's such a happy baby. And comfortable, because Josie wears Love's. Love's hourglass design fits comfortably. All elastic diapers don't fit the same. Compare yours to Love's. Hold it up to the light. If the padding's wide, it has to bunch up between your baby's legs. Love's paddings curve to fit comfortably. Your baby's comfort begins with Love's. Love's. Did you tell your friend Jim about the party? I haven't yet, but I was planning to. And of course, he'll immediately volunteer to be your escort. Well, I really don't know how he'll react, but I don't see any reason to hide it from him. I wouldn't ask you to do that. But I am asking you to allow me to be your escort that evening. Sky, you're the host. And I'd like you to be the hostess. You could arrive somewhat before the other guests, uh, supervise the servants. Whoa, 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 supervising servants is not my strong point. Well, you could just make sure that things are running smoothly, that the place looks festive and that my tie isn't crooked. Oh, is that what a hostess does? If the word bothers you, then substitute whatever you like. The point is I want you by my side, Valerie. And a host should be by the side of his guests. <sighs> well, who's coming? The cream of Monticello society. At least as much cream as I could skim off on such short notice. In fact, some good friends of yours will be there. Mike and Nancy Carr. Oh, that's right. I did know that. Actually, I've just invited about a dozen people or so. But I want everything to go exactly right. Well, what about servants? Gunther and Nora will be handling things. And Spencer? Spencer is no longer a servant. He is my business manager. In fact, right now he's off in Chicago handling some business for me. But I'm not concerned about the servants. I am about the hostess. Now, is that going to be you? All right, down with your weapons. It's time for all good little policemen to come to lunch. Listen, baby, you're going to have to wait a few minutes. I'm expecting somebody else. You're supposed to only be expecting me. Is that nice? It will only take a few minutes. Why don't you go outside and uh, read a magazine? I certainly will not. I'm going to stay right here and make sure that you keep your promise. Somebody has to look out for you. So what are you going to do? Pick me up for lunch every day for the rest of my life? Whatever it takes. 
You wouldn't like it. Sometimes I'm in a bad mood, even worse than I am now. Oh, are you in a bad mood now? I hope it's not because of me. No, it's not because of you. One of my officers did a very stupid thing last night. I had to send him home on vacation, but I can't afford him out of the office. Well, you always do the things that you have to do, and that's one of the reasons I've always admired you, Derek, because you're so forceful. Well, my forcefulness is reserved for my work, not my private life. Maybe that's why I prefer working to, to almost anything else I do. That way I don't have to face my weaknesses once I leave the office. <laughs> oh, excuse me. <laughs> yes, Helen. Oh, I thought you were going to take care of that. Listen, I don't know how to RSVP. Well, use departmental stationery, thank Mr. Whitney for inviting me, and tell him, sure, I'll accept. Are you invited to Sky Whitney's party? Thank you, Helen. Of course I was. What a coincidence. So was I, but I wasn't going to go because I didn't have an escort. But now we can go together. I don't believe it. Do you know what the name of that painting is? Number nine. Oh, I could think of a better number than that. I wonder how long I'm going to have to live with that piece of garbage hanging there. Oh, it looks okay to me. Hey, you've been hanging around with Endicott too long. That's your trouble. What's the difference? You don't have to look at it. What are you talking about? It's hanging right in the middle of the gallery. How am I going to avoid it? We could always hang something else. The only other thing I'd like to hang there is a cop. A guy named Damien Tyler. Stick him right up on that hook and watch him swing. Now, that's a picture I could handle for about a month. Be patient, Eddie. We'll get him. Or rather, your boy Loomis will get him. Hello. I'm Mrs. Revere. Oh, hello. Uh, <clears throat> um, my is name Endicott is... Is here? No, no, she's not here. Uh, she's retired suddenly. Uh, my name is Eddie Lorim. I'm the new oh. manager here. <laughs> and this nice-looking fellow here is uh, Joseph. He's my associate. How do you do? How do you do? Is there something I can help you with? Uh... Well, I don't know exactly what I want. I have a terribly blank wall in my living room. Oh, well, uh, <clears throat> we were uh, just thinking there's a beautiful painting hanging on this wall here. In fact, Joe and I were just commenting on how magnificent it is. Right, Joe? Yeah, sure, we were. Yes, it, it is interesting. Uh, who's the artist? Um, it's a fellow named uh, uh, Gauche. Who? Oh, oh, that's, that's gauche. I've seen that word before, gauche. Yeah. <laughs> yes, well, it may be a little gauche, but I think it's pronounced gouache, and I think it's the medium. I don't know. It could have been a large or medium. I didn't know the guy. No, she means uh, <laughs> the artist's medium, Mr. Lorimer. Oh. Watercolor, oils. Mm -hmm. uh, Mrs. Revere, the artist is Josea Livingston. And the painting is number nine. Nine? Oh, my lucky number. I'll take it. What did you say? I said I'll take it. We asked Eleanor Bailey if she thought her denture cleanser could clean away cherry stain. I would imagine so. What about a stain of cherry and tea? I don't think so. Or a triple stain of cherry, tea, and tobacco? I would be very skeptical. Then watch Extra Strength Effortant go to work on a triple stain of cherry, tea, and tobacco with Effortant's powerful blue action formula. Effortant cleaned the triple stain in between. I'm going home and use Effortant. <laughs> Extra Strength Effortant. One Light to Live. Mary is your daughter. I'm not sure I understand what you mean. I don't want to fight. I think what is best for Mary is that she be with her natural mother. One Light to Live. Baby, I really don't understand you. Why would you want to go to a party at the Whitney house after everything that's happened? Because I still feel like it's my house. That's the point, though. You moved out under such a... Uh unusual circumstances. Why would you want to go back? Derek, everyone in town is dying with laughter because of the way Sky Whitney stripped me of everything I had and then threw me out with practically nothing but a toothbrush. Come on, I'm sure it wasn't quite that bad. It was worse than that. You have no idea the humiliation I suffered. He laughed in my face while he was shoving me out the door. Well, if he shoved you out the door, why is he opening it for you now? It seems to me you'd be the last person he'd want to invite. I don't know. It was some act of perversity. You know? No, I don't know. 
Well, he just didn't think I would show up in a million years, and that's exactly why I have to go. Listen, Raven, I'm not sure I want to get mixed up in this little uh, game. You're not getting mixed up in anything, Derek. You'll just be my escort. Besides, come on, you know how much I love to hang on your arm. I'm not sure I can handle this, baby. Yes, you can. It's time that you came out in the world again, and I'm just the one to take you. Hmm. Saved by the buzzer. Yes? Oh, it's about time. All right, send him in. Sit down, will you? Sit down! Hi, Chief. Loomis, I'm glad I finally caught up with you. What's up? Listen, you mentioned before you wanted to be on this task force. Well, Calvin Stone is going on vacation. You're going to be paired up with Tyler for one week. How's that hit you? That hits me right where I live. Thanks, Chief. I'll do my best. I know you will. Kraft announces a dressing idea so new, it sizzles. A taste so fresh, it's juicy. New bacon and tomato dressing. It just had to be Kraft. With real bacon, crisp and savory. Real tomato chopped in bits and a touch of sour cream. If you think it sounds good, just wait till you taste it. New bacon and tomato dressing. For a better twist on taste, America turns to Kraft. What are the exclusive childhood secrets of dynasty seductive women inquiring minds want to know? I want to know. How did tragedy put marriage on the menu for TV's Alice? This week's National Enquirer tells you. How can taking ginger prevent motion sickness? Can bargaining bring you better big ticket buys? It's in the Enquirer. Has Dukes of Hazard star Bo's driving ambition left Luke in the cold? Find out in the Enquirer. Over 100 features for people with inquiring minds. Like me.